Hi team, um, welcome to this video which is on um, chapter 9, it's the first video of chapter 9, um, which is on constant acceleration. Um, now we're going to focus on displacement time graphs this video um, and look at the way in which they interact with constant acceleration. Key thing for us here um, is to think about, um, yeah, we're going to focus primarily or, or for the entirety of this unit on, on constant acceleration. Um, there is variable acceleration, we'll do that, I think it's chapter 11. Um, later on this uh, year. So we're going to work with constant acceleration to begin with and we're going to be starting with displacement time graphs. Now before we get properly stuck in um, to, to the work or the key things you're going to need for the sheet today, um, there's a few things that we need to go through just to make sure our kind of our base knowledge is there. Um, first thing to say is that we're interested in movement at this point. This is a mechanics unit um, and we're interested to those to the way in which things move when they're subjected to constant acceleration, as I've, as I've said. Um, we're going to be using or begin to start using some of the assumptions we learned in the last unit. So it's important we have them in our in our minds that the the the, uh, the assumptions around um, the nature of the objects, um, primarily around kind of particles and things, will definitely be useful um, in this unit. Um, we also need to be able to define three key terms. Um, so we need to define displacement, we need to define velocity, we need to be able to define acceleration. Now all three of those are vector quantities and we'll have magnitude and direction. I'm not going to go through that what, what that means um, as a vector quantity, we've done enough of that um, so far this year, but one thing I really need is to, to, I really need is to remember that as we go through because otherwise we might start making mistakes. So it's a vector and it has magnitude and direction. Um, so let's start with displacement. Um, displacement we label as S when we're doing mechanics, um, not to be confused with speed, that's a key thing that can sometimes happen when we first start, but displacement is S. Um, now, displacement is the distance in a straight line between where an object is and its starting place. Um, now, occasionally we might we might actually start with displacement, so that would be changed to being the distance in a straight line between where an object is and some other defined location or the origin. Okay, so we might define somewhere else as the origin. To kind of illustrate this, we, we might start at this point A um, and move in this path to this point B. Now, obviously the distance travelled is all the way around here and I need to measure this all the way around back to point B. But actually our displacement is this vector, okay? The displacement is just the vector from A to B, okay? Now, that's as simple as that for displacement. Um, most of the problems we'll be working on will have done will have displacement in one dimension, so back and forth or up and down, um, and so we'll simplify it in that way. Um, <coughs> now, velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement, and we'll refer back to displacement regularly, especially throughout this video, um, as the kind of core base concept. Right, where you are is the basis for for whether you've moved. Okay, um, so the rate of change of displacement is what we're interested in for velocity. Um, and just to illustrate that as well, if I've got these two kind of particles, A and B, um, and they both then move, I can clearly see that B has moved significantly faster than A. Now, the reason why I know that B has moved faster is because given that the displacement is fine, as is, is the same, it has happened more quickly. Okay, so the rate of change is displacement. The velocity is a measure of how quickly the displacement of an object changes. Now, in kind of formal mathematical sense, we, we'd write that as this, that V is equal to delta S over delta T. Now, this is a general formula. We'll have more specific ones um, in a future video, but delta S is the rate of change. Oh, sorry, is, the rate, is, the, is a change in S, okay? So this capital delta means change in, so the change in S over the change in the time. So change in displacement over change in time. Um, that's a kind of formal mathematical way of writing this sentence, that the rate of change of displacement. Um, we have our units of V as meters per second or meters over seconds, okay, and it comes from this definition uh, as we've kind of mentioned in a previous video, displacement is in meters, time is in seconds, so meters per second is our, is our SI base unit of speed, um, or velocity, sorry. Now, that's velocity, let's look at acceleration. Acceleration, um, where velocity is the rate of change of displacement, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay, so we, again, we're interested in a rate of change, how quickly something is happening. Now, the rate of change of velocity, I have this kind of gift to, to help us have a sense of it. Um, now, in this, we have the three cars. Now, green and red are moving at constant velocities. Um, 
it, the increment in, in terms of how much they're travelling doesn't really change. Um, but we can see blue at the bottom starts with it at a at a smaller velocity than a than um than the red uh, the red car, but but speeds up as it goes across the screen, and that velocity increases to the point where it's then moving significantly faster um, than the red car, meaning that it covers the same distance in a shorter time. Okay, so in this case we have a an acceleration that that velocity is changing. Okay, so acceleration is a measure of how quickly an object gets quicker. Okay, so the greater the acceleration is, the more quickly the velocity is changing. Okay, now we can have an acceleration that means something is getting quicker. We can also have an acceleration or deceleration that means that something is getting slower. Okay, so acceleration is a measure of how quickly an object gets quicker. Um, in general, we'll say that A is delta V over delta T, so the change in velocity over the change in time. Um, and that means using our units, that the units of acceleration using SI base units are meters per second per second, so meters per second squared. Okay, and we'll write it using this format, so MS to the negative 2. Um, now those are kind of brief explanations of the three key concepts in all of, the, all of this kind of motion-based mechanics, or kinematics as we call it sometimes. Um, Displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Um, we'll revisit these and we're going to focus on the first two today, displacement and velocity. And we're going to do that by looking at displacement time graphs. Displacement time graph will have displacement on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, and in this case I've got kilometres for my displacement and I've got a time scale that involves um, just having the actual time. So the difference between 9 and 10 is 1 hour, for instance. Um, what I'm going to start with doing is just explaining what is happening at each point. Okay, I'm going to explain what is happening at each point. Um, let's start with A. Um, now, during motion, during A, and I, I'm going to start by thinking about what, what is happening. Where is my object? So, what is happening to the displacement of the object? Now, at the beginning, there is zero displacement. It's at the starting point, and after two hours, it, there are 30 kilometers of displacement. Because my displacement has increased, that means that um, there is a constant positive velocity. Now, the positive velocity comes from an increase in the displacement. Okay, Displacement has increased over a change in time. I know it's constant because the rate of change, which is kind of signified by how steep this line is, is constant. This line is constantly steep. Okay, There is no change to how quickly this thing is changing. Okay. Um, We'll talk more about what it means to be constant in um, in a slide's time uh, when we look more formally at how you can define this. And some of you might have seen this in a, in, in um, last year's GCC work anyway. But I'm I'm always going to describe movement by looking at this display, the displacement to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to say right the object's displacement increases from zero to thirty kilometers, um, and there's therefore a um, positive velocity. Now that can lead us to then thinking about part B. Now at part B at the beginning, my displacement is 30 kilometers and at the end my displacement is 30 kilometers. That means that I have one hour and there is no change in motion. Okay, There is no movement. It, the displacement has not changed. So because the displacement has not changed, there is no change, there, there is no velocity. So I can say that the object's displacement does not change, so it is not moving. And the, ob and the velocity is zero. Okay. Now again, I'm going to do the same process as I look at C. Each time I'm going to break it down and look at what happens, what's changed over the time period with the displacement. And I can see from here that the velocity's displacement increases from 30 kilometers to 60 kilometers. But it does that over half an hour. So I can say that the displacement has increased, and so there's a constant positive velocity. I also say that there's a change that the change of um, displacement happens. The same change of displacement over part as part A, so the change is 30 kilometers. The change in displacement happens in a shorter period of time, and so the velocity in part C is greater than in part A. Okay, so I can compare different parts as well. Now that can also kind of be seen by how steep the lines are. You'll notice. Okay, so in in kind of the motion of part C is is quite a steep line compared to the motion of part A. Okay? So the rate of change in part C is greater than in part A, and so the velocity is greater in part C than in part A. 
Now, lastly, I want to put look at part D. Now, now in in this part, again, I'm, I'm interested in the change of the velocity over the time period, and I've got a time period of from 12:30 till two, and that's one and a half hours. Okay, that's one and a half hours. Now, the key thing here is to always be aware that because I'm interested in how time is moving or the change over time. For part A and part C, I'm always looking at the change. What happens? Where is the? Where are we at the end of the time compared to where we were at the beginning? The same is true part of here. We're not necessarily going to take the biggest displacement and and take and, and work from there. We want the end take away the beginning. Okay, so in this case, we can see that over this one and a half hour period until two o'clock, we, we have started at 60 kilometers and then we end at zero kilometers, okay? So we have lost displacement. The displacement has gone down. Now that means that there is a velocity because the displacement is obviously changing, but that means that it is constant and negative, okay? Again, it's constant because it's a straight line, but it's negative displacement, negative velocity, sorry, because our change of displacement will be negative, okay? I have lost displacement as I return back to zero, and so the velocity is constant and negative. Now I'm going to look at that again in two seconds, but I also want to, I kind of alluded to it, and I'm sure you would have looked at this last year, um, but there's a key thing that we can say from displacement time graphs, um, and we need to know that of how we actually calculate the velocity from a displacement time graph. So we'll look at that now. Now to do this, I'm going to start from my definition of what the gradient of a graph is, okay? So a gradient of a graph is the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y over change in x. Then when I look at my uh, definition of velocity, that's the change in s over change in t. Now, I want us to compare these two, and this is really important, a really important skill for graphs, both in maths and the sciences, is to be able to compare these two and go, right, normally the change in y, so that's just whatever is on the y-axis. Now, in this case, displacement. Okay, Displacement is on the y-axis, which matches up to my velocity here, also to my uh, displacement on the, on the numerator of this uh, fraction here. So I want the change in y over the change in x, which is, uh, and, and where my change in y will actually be the change in displacement, which works for me. Change in x, the x-axis is time, which again means that change in y over change in x is the same thing here as change in s over change in t for this particular graph, given the way we've set it out. That means that actually, on this graph, the gradient will equal the velocity Okay, so the gradient of a displacement time graph gives us the velocity. Now, if we ever forget that, we should be able to return to first principles and think, what is the gradient? How do I calculate it? It's y over x. What is the quantity? Speed over time. Oh, sorry, displacement over time. And we should know that that's velocity. Okay, displacement over time is velocity. So every time we're ever asked what, how, to find the grade, how to find the velocity from a displacement time graph, I'm using the gradient every single time. Okay, the gradient of a displacement time graph gives us the velocity. Now, what I'm going to do now is, is do that for each individual part. I'm going to go through one example. I want you to do the rest. Now, this is my kind of working for finding finding the um, the velocity during the part motion of pi. I know I'm going to start, and I'm always going to show that I understand what the velocity is. What's my definition of velocity? Is the change in displacement over the change in time? Now, the change in displacement is given by the end displacement minus where. I started, so the, the final displacement minus the initial, 30 minus 0, and that's going to be divided by 11 minus 9, which is the change in the time. Okay, 30 divided by 2, which gives me 15, and then that's kilometres per hour, because those are the units I've used. Okay, so the answer is 15 kilometres per hour. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and have a go at B, C, and D, um, and then we will. I'll show the answers for you um, once you've unpaused the video. Okay, so, so do that now for me. Great, so you should have those three as your answers, 0 kilometres per hour, 60 kilometres per hour, and negative 40 kilometres per hour. I suspect the one that some of us might have had an issue with is this one. I said, I'm sure people have got the, the number 40. The key thing, and, and this is this comes back to when I was talking about velocity being a vector quantity, um, velocity here is negative, okay? The displacement is going down, so the velocity has to be negative. Now, we can see that because the gradient of this line is clearly negative compared to the gradients of these, which will be positive. 
And I'm hoping as well that we should see straight away and didn't really need to calculate that the velocity at part B is zero because there's no rate of change. There is no gradient at that point. Great. Um, now, just quickly before um, you have a go at the pre-quiz and then go onto the sheet, I want us to have a look at two specific displacement time graphs which don't have a straight line. Um, now, the key thing here is occasionally we might be asked not necessarily to calculate, although we may do, we may be asked to calculate, but we, we're going to need to understand what is actually happening to the displacement and time uh, graph in each of these cases. So, um, the first thing you're always going to do is either do this actually on a graph you've got in front of you or visualize this in your mind. I want you to start by drawing on tangents to the curve to understand what is happening to the gradient of the curve at each point. So clearly the gradient of this curve isn't fixed, it's not constant. And these, these tangents to the curve show us that. Okay. Down here I've got a relatively um, shallow gradient and so a relatively small velocity. I know the gradient gives me the velocity. Here I've got a steeper velocity, so it's going to, got, going to have got bigger. And up here again it's going to have got bigger again. So I've got a small velocity, a kind of medium velocity and a high velocity. So over time my velocity is increasing. So that means that I have increasing speed or velocity and therefore acceleration, okay, a curve like this which is going up. So if my gradient increases over time, then that's how a displacement time graph can show us acceleration. Now you're not going to be asked to calculate the acceleration, you might be asked to calculate the instantaneous velocity, but you're going to draw a tangent and then find the gradient of that tangent to do so. Okay, so you, the key thing at this point is just to be able to describe what is happening to the motion if I have a curved displacement time graph. Now, as I'm sure you can probably deduce given what's happening over here, there's going to be something um, here when we've got a, a, D, uh, a kind of a curve that looks like this. But again, I want us to get into the habit of, right, I'm going to draw on my tangents. Initially, I've got quite a steep gradient, so quite a high velocity. It then gets shallower and is therefore more medium and then get shallower again and is therefore low okay so broadly i have quite a high velocity up here at the beginning a smaller velocity and then an even smaller velocity at the end now because that velocity is getting smaller with time i have a decreasing speed or velocity and therefore some deceleration now as we've seen in a previous in a previous video deceleration is the same as negative acceleration Okay, so it's decelerating, I have a negative acceleration, and so um, I would see a decreasing velocity at each point along this curve. It's really important that we can start to describe these curved ones, those are the hardest you'll see. So if you're stuck about it, we're always going to return to what is happening, what is changing at each point, how has the displacement changed, but also increase, importantly, has the gradient changed, because that might suggest that we don't have a constant velocity we have some kind of acceleration. What I'd like you to do now please is obviously let us know if you have any questions. There's a pre-quiz um, on Microsoft Teams for you, um, a pre-quiz for you to have a go at um, and then the sheet um, as well. Uh, good luck, any questions please do let us know.